you will see that many of these manifestos by other parties are almost last minute uh, compilation of issues or topics and uh, many of them are just general ideas and rhetoric but really when you come to the nuts and bolts of it I think voters want to know well this is what you say how do they know that this is what you can do and you may be able to do it but where are your people to do this that is a key question so teams that are assembled in the last minute uh, they may not even know each other that well yet whereas for us for the PAP we have worked through this for years from time to time every term we have new people joining us and these new people will get onto the ground learn the ropes get the experience and make the contribution to the people and that is how we have been carrying forward our renewal people who are inducted in learn and then carry on to the next lap. Yeah. Yes, yes, certainly, certainly it's an opportunity for the voters in Pishan Tupayo to cast a vote for the party which they think can best represent them, that can best as fulfil their aspirations and their wishes. I think that is the real test of every election. But an election is not about a game, you know, it's not about soccer. It's not that you can play a game of soccer, then later on you can sit down, pat each other's back and have a glass of beer. No, no. Election is serious because it is about people's lives. It's about their future. So we must take elections seriously and we must take the whole process of uh, electing the right kind of people into parliament seriously, you know. It's not a gamble at all. So you think it will have little impact on the like no, I think for Maslamat, some people will have some views. The question is whether they think that uh, I have fully accounted for it. I believe I have. And if there are some more questions, certainly these can be raised. If there are areas which I have not done enough, uh, well, tell us what they are and uh, we will study them. And if they are workable, certainly we will accept them. I'm not saying that we have all the answers to the problems that we face. No, not at all. I'm saying that, well, of all the uh, particular pro of the particular problem, uh, we have several ways of doing it. Finally, you decide which is the best way of doing it, and what is the cost of doing it, and then what are the benefits that will come about at the end of doing all that. I think for whatever you do, you know, there's always a trade-off. There's always a trade-off. We can put up uh, a Singapore to be a fortress. You can completely secure, nobody gets in and out. But how does it help us at all? It doesn't. You need to make a living, right? You need to trade, you need people to come in and out. Singaporeans also need to go in and out. And therefore, you find a way to facilitate this. And when you facilitate this, there is a risk that you need to manage. And I think so far, we have managed well. And our Officers on the ground have worked very hard. Until you sit down at a counter or until you are right on the ground walking, uh, you don't really quite appreciate what it means to keep Singapore safe. Really. You know, for those who have lived overseas, uh, those who have studied overseas, I think they will know. When I meet Singaporeans overseas, one of the first things they tell me is that Singapore is so safe. They experience from uh, their own uh, environment in a foreign country how different it is from that of Singapore. And they tell me that. I didn't solicit those views, but they on their own uh, offered those comments to me. Well, I think first I told Parliament the day after his escape that a mistake was made, there was a lapse in the security and I apologised for that and I said that we'll do everything to find him. Eventually it took us a while to locate him after he ran away and he, we gave the Malaysians the information where he was hiding. Now, having done all that, I think people did understand that yes indeed, we have done what we could. Of course, the first mistake cannot be obliterated. It was there, I own up to it as the minister, I took responsibility for it. That's the right thing to do. 
and I think people will look at that and see on the whole, based on what I've done here for the last 27 years, is that one lapse by a department fatal, fatal to their decision on electing me or not? I think that they will have to consider. I've been here for 27 years. I've seen the changes starting with Topayo when I was there in 1984 to 1991. The whole of Topayo had only three room flats rent, uh, purchased, one room and two room rental flats, plenty of them. Even at the site where I was yesterday, Pishan Heights, uh, Topayo Heights, Topayo Heights, most of them there were rental flats. Today you look around the environment, we have 40 storey buildings, the nice park has been built. So when I look back at Topayo uh, 25 years ago or even uh, 20 years ago, it is completely transformed. Completely. Looking at the uh, type of housing, the mix of housing, the connectivity to the rest of Singapore, uh, looking at the facilities and the various things that we put in place to serve the residents, I think the residents here are generally quite happy. Ultimately, they see, have I been doing work here? I think that's what they see. If they say, oh no, you've been neglecting us, then I deserve to be out. I don't think that's a sense, because I know walking around, talking to residents, no, they do uh, appreciate the changes that has happened in Topayo, or in Pishan for that matter, or even in Shunfu and Singming, because I also know these places quite well, having been there for the last 20 years. Bishan, Thompson, uh, Singming, Shunfu. I've been around there for 20 years since 1991. And you can also see the tremendous change in these places.